Now, I disagree with the fact that there should even be a process to, to decertify an election, but Democrats did it three times in the elections prior to that. Where was the hand-wringing then? Stacey Abrams has because never said happen. that she lost the governor's that's, race in, 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 and in that, Georgia. And that's Nobody wrong. Nobody wrings their hands and about that's it. wrong. And so Dan Crenshaw went on Bill Maher's show this weekend, and the funny part is I am not a big fan of Dan Crenshaw. I think he's a rhino. I think he's a neocon, but I suppose when you are juxtaposed next to positions like like this, it's very easy to seem like the reasonable and intelligent guy in the room. Mark? Is this pretty... Wait. Can, Look, can I explain I, I, Russia? The guys are what I think, what can what, I say? What I, I going on with Russia, because we once did an editorial out in this show. <laughs> it's the last country that's all in on white. Did you watch the Olympics? Mm. Like every country in the world now is multiracial. Yeah. Not Russia. I think that's something that a part of the Republican Party just really likes about Russia. They are not for multiculturalism. They're oh, not no. for multi. No one I think there's more go. white people in Sweden. I mean, I don't think Sweden that's a good idea. took in like a million. Sweden, Norway, like <laughs> I think they have what? the higher white population. What? Russia has like only Asian population. Come on, I'm not. Sh- no, that's just not it. That is it. That's not it. I, c- I could read you the quotes. They <laughs> they love it. They I mean they their quotes about how like it's the last country in Europe that's going to be completely right. white and. <laughs> Anyway, we'll move on. Um, some people- Folks, if you enjoy the content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. But it's like, what? I mean, that argument doesn't even make any sense from Bill Maher. Like, Russia is not exactly even a good example of the argument he's trying to make. But I play that clip there just to essentially show you this is what we are up against. And this is why even Dan Crenshaw, a Republican I'm not a big fan of, seemed like a completely reasonable guy against Bill Maher and the rest of this panel because they start to get into debating Trump versus Kamala, how the election is going to go, and take a listen for yourself how the exchange ensues. Instinctively, the guy, the, per, the candidate that doesn't want to debate is the one that doesn't need it. The one that needs it wants to debate. So I, I'm, but I he's, we'll make a friendly bet. I think it goes I mean, off. he's going to shit the bed. You know this. I mean, you, I, I, he, I, I, he I does not that. do well with women. <laughs> Look, he just I, does, he, I, I would, I would, whether he does the debate or not, I don't, I'm not a political pundit trying to analyze this stuff. Um, but I do know that it's a very easy debate to win. So all you have to say is, look, you had four years, I had four years. When I was president, um, and, and when you were president, and here's the differences. Gas prices are up 50% when you were, when, when you're vice president. Electricity prices up 30%. Grocery up 22%. Um, the list keeps going. Taxes were lower under Trump. They raised them under Biden Harris. Uh, regulations were lower under Trump. They raised them under Biden and Harris. Immigration numbers way down. They actually tried to stop the problem. Record numbers under Biden and Harris. This is a very easy debate to win because on the metrics, it's very easy to show side by side. Okay, but, but that's what his campaign wants him to say. But Donald Trump is the it's not a campaign where you just give him his talking points and he goes right. out there and delivers them. Yeah. I mean, Donald Trump is his own biggest uh, no, impediment. We'll, we'll his own it. campaign will tell you that. I mean, he's questioning whether or not she, well, her race, and whether or not she's actually black at an event with black journalists. <laughs> it's stuff like that that his campaign is, you know, watching in real time yeah. and knowing he's their own biggest liability. You know, all this talk from the panel about how Trump is in huge trouble at the debate, and I get it to some degree. We don't know what's going to happen in the debate, right? So it can be a really good performance by Trump. It can be a bad one. Kamala can do amazing. Kamala can do badly. It's in the future. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but it's kind of ironic that Kamala Harris is remembered from 2020 as being one of the worst debaters ever. And even on the 2024 campaign trail, whenever she goes off script, whenever she's not using a teleprompter, We've seen she's not very strong. She will not even sit down with a single journalist to do an interview. But people like Caitlin Collins, James Carville, and Bill Maher are just so confident that she's ready to debate. It's really Donald Trump who is scared to debate, which, like, again, say what you will about Trump. I'm not saying it's an automatic slam dunk home run that he's going to decimate Kamala in the debate. We'll see, right? We've got to see the strategy and all that. But this idea that Kamala is just going in with no preparation, she hasn't done any interviews. You saw her even in the DNC speech. She came out there a little bit nervous. The automatic assumption that she's just going to come out and do fine, I really wouldn't buy into that. And also, if I may say, I mean, you know, you're sure of yourself. You present these issues as if it's, uh, you know, a slam dunk. They're more, less regulations. Well, some regulations are good. Some are good, but 10 more. Some are bad. More Believe me, I live in California. I know. We have a lot. 
It's like, I, I oversee the EPA on my but, subcommittee. Like, uh, one regulation uh, but, can be good. Can, clean air, good. good. All yeah, of it's good. I'm, if I'm, more, if I'm, no. And I have a lot of friends who Republicans are kind of... And by the way, Bill Maher is there saying, like, you say this as if it's so black and white. Bill just definitively said that Trump is going to poop the bed. Like, he knows it's going to happen. Okay, so it's kind of funny. I believe in lighter touch regulation, maybe a few less taxes, kind of slightly nationalistic. If I'm one of you, I want Trump to get beat bad. I mean, I'm talking about a 64, 72 wipeout. You know what happened after Republicans got wiped out in 64? They won in 68. You know what happened after the Democrats got wiped out in 72? They won in 76. If he gets, if Biden, if Harris gets 280 electoral votes, your party is fucked. Because he stuck with them the whole time. They're not well, going anyway. You want, you want a wipeout. What I, what, I, what I want most of all. And that's just yet another low IQ take from the panel. James Carville here is basically saying uh, Trump is already guaranteed to lose, which is not true. Like, that's not even true at all. But you should just want Trump to lose as badly as possible because the history says that means you'll win in the next election. There are plenty of examples to the contrary there, right? In 1984, Democrats got wiped out by Reagan. What happened in 1988? The Republicans won again. 1932 to 1936 with FDR. Same exact examples. Oh, and by the way, the 2004 election was pretty close. What happened in 2008? Democrats retook the whole thing. So that take doesn't even make any sense. The guy is just yapping like he doesn't even know what he's talking about. But that said, uh, let's take a listen to Dan Crenshaw's response. It's pretty good. Uh, is for my daughter to grow up in a in a place where she can start her own business more right. easily, where she's not competing against men on a swimming team or in a wrestling match. That's what I want most of all. And so the the, the Trump policies simply are better. You have less of the bad stuff, more of the good right. stuff, right? What, I don't know. How, I, how is it going? I don't know how to break this election? to you. Like, what other the things Trump that are economy, supposed to be down the, the, are the, up and all the, things the, supposed to be up or down? The, the what, I know, 50 no to 1. Than the I know. I know. I can run circles around you on the economics of this. Let's go back to 280 votes. Okay. What does Trump do if he loses this? Now, he lost the last election, right? Yeah, yeah, he lost the last election. <laughs> okay, that's a very important thing. Somebody's so notice how they, they, this is basically like the Democrat platform. Every time you try to bring up an issue that actually affects people like the economy, here we go again. Donald Trump, but Donald Trump won't concede the election. Predictable. Okay, okay, but he hasn't conceded losing that last no, election. My point to you, sir, is that gas prices and food prices go up and down. But this shit is forever. Okay. You, it's, don't don't it's, take my word for don't take my word for Biden policies being uh, responsible for inflation. You okay. can just ask the Fed and their asking, statements in 2022. That's not the, the question I'm asking you. It was all on fiscal stimulus, which is right. the American rescue okay, plan. Okay, but I'm saying that stuff. That's the normal stuff of politics it's and economics. 50%. It goes up and down, but it's not, not that normal. But wait. But but wouldn't you concede that not conceding elections is a much bigger, more existential issue and that he's not going to concede this election? Can a, you imagine? Can you tell me a scenario where he loses, maybe even by more, and he concedes the election? Can you imagine him saying, I've seen the results and I'd like to congratulate Kamala Harris on no, running a good campaign? <laughs> it's impossible to yes. imagine. No, Bill, actually, because for normal people who are not millionaires living in the Hollywood Hills like you, actually, their ability to afford to feed their kids is more important than whether Donald Trump makes a concession speech or not. That doesn't actually change uh, the transfer of power or who really won the election. OK, no, actually, like outside of your little bubble here, not that many people care about this, at least in comparison to the real issues like feeding their families and what type of stuff their kids are being taught in school. Etc. Etc. All of that. I don't have to imagine. That, so I don't have to imagine any of it because I, I know the history of it, and the history of it is he moved out of the White House. So there was a peaceful transition of power, and there was an inauguration he, on January 21st. Correct. He, he, so, he tried everything not to do that. Tried, yeah, they tried to do the same un unconstitutional process no, that Democrats did nobody, in the last three the, elections. The, the, Republicans the Democrats won. sent fake electors. The Democrats pressured the Justice Department. The and, Democrats and the, went to court and got laughed out of it. No, so that, you're, never, you're talking about legal that never happened right in now. any other election. You're talking election. about so. using, utilizing the legal 
legal process. Now, I disagree with the fact that there should even be a process to, to decertify an election, but Democrats did it three times in the elections prior to that. Where was the hand-wringing then? Stacey Abrams has because never said happen. that she lost the governor's that's, race in, 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 and in that, Georgia. And that's Nobody wrong. Nobody rings their hands about That's it. wrong, and it's a false equivalency it's to not, sending it's fake not, electors. Who are fake electors? What, what, what fake electors? So there you have it again, as usual, the ivory tower elitism from Bill Maher, because again, he says, oh, yeah, gas prices, you know, they're not that good, but they go up and down. Who really cares about that? What you really got to care about is the fact that Trump, uh, you know, didn't think he lost the last election, even though it doesn't change who actually has the power. I truly think the dynamic of politics is a little bit different. And even if you want to go down the refuse to accept election results route, Dan Crenshaw is also right there. It goes both ways. It really does go both ways. But that said, let me know your thoughts on this debate in the comment section down below. How did you think Dan Crenshaw did? Because again, like not really a fan of the guy, but hey, props to him at least. You know, again, when you're next to Bill Maher, who is sometimes reasonable, but when you bring up Trump, absolutely not. Bill Maher, Caitlin Collins, and James Carville it's pretty easy to seem like the reasonable one, but he certainly got the job done. So let me know. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new. Follow me on X and social media. Link in the description. And until next time, God bless and peace.